The Judgment Day's interesting new storyline continue to develop this week, so we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out some big SummerSlam news, Alexa Bliss, and much more. Starting things off with big news for the upcoming 2024 SummerSlam event. WWE had Logan Paul break the news that SummerSlam 2024 will be held in Cleveland, Ohio. Logan broke the news because Cleveland is his hometown, after all. It's also the first time that Cleveland has hosted SummerSlam since 1996. Logan Paul says WWE will have a big show planned for the event, and Logan even himself said that he's going to do his best to pull some of his own strings in order to make it the best event his city has ever seen. He also said that he wants the Kelsey brothers to be there, and all these other celebrity guests as well. Logan Paul even joked about SummerSlam opponent being LeBron James. And the idea of LeBron competing in a match may be a bit out of the realm of possibility, but Cleveland is also the hometown of LeBron James, and LeBron has been a WWE fan his whole entire life as well. So maybe even just a regular guest appearance and attending the show wouldn't be that impossible for someone like LeBron James. And SummerSlam will be taking place during the NBA's offseason, so that's another plus for that scenario. But speaking of LeBron James and WWE, a recent clip from Los Angeles Lakers game went extremely viral amongst the wrestling community. In NBA games, the home team arenas often play some chill music while the home team is on offense to ease their nerves and help them find a groove to score. Well, one of the songs the Lakers played while they were on offense was Roman Reigns' WWE theme song. This is a common thing for music like Stone Cold Steve Austin's theme song. You'll hear his song at any sports game because it's that iconic, and they love to use it as hype music. Well, it's also nice to see Roman's music is now breaking into that field as well for being used in big sporting events. Paul Heyman even acknowledged the clip and reposted it on his social media platforms. So it was a cool moment to see all around. Alexa Bliss made headlines recently after she did a mini question and answer session with her fans that answered a lot of cool questions and interesting things. So we'll break down everything Alexa revealed and talked about there. Alexa was asked about her preferred hairstyle when in the ring and she went with pigtails. She also was asked to name the favorite era of her entire WWE career, and her answer was all of her time on screen with Bray Wyatt. And that's definitely an easy answer for Alexa. Some fans are wondering why Alexa wouldn't pick her 2016-2018 era, where she was winning all of her world titles and competing in constant title matches. Well, it seems like she didn't pick that era because she simply had more fun working with Bray Wyatt, even if no titles were won during that time, it was just the most fun she's ever had in the company, so it's a no-brainer why she would pick that. She also listed Nia Jax as her favorite opponent and said her WrestleMania match with Nia is her favorite match of her own. Alexa was also asked about her feelings towards Mercedes Monet, and Alexa called Mercedes very talented. When asked about her favorite ring gear ever, Alexa answered by saying it's a brand new one that she's never worn before. Alexa also said that she had brand new Wednesday Adams themed gear that was sitting on ice and never been used in the ring before, but that's already her favorite piece of ring gear ever. Alexa talked about this specific piece of ring gear since she's been out of the ring, and based off some hints that she said about it, it does seem like the Wednesday Adams themed gear could be based off Jenna Ortega's recent portrayal of the character. Alexa Bliss went on to mention that she missed the fans and crowd interaction very much. And when she was flat out asked if she'll be returning to the WWE wrestling ring sometime in the near future, she simply responded with, yup. So that appears to be the biggest takeaway from Alexa's question and answer session. She's not finished with the ring yet at all. She misses it. She has new ring gear ready to go and is eager to get back in there. Like we mentioned last time we talked about Alexa's return, it'll be interesting to see where they take the character once she's back. We've seen Alexa going from being normal to turning into a supernatural character. And once that run was over, WWE turned her back into being normal, but constantly flirted with the idea of Alexa re-entering a supernatural state during those last few months before her pregnancy. So it looks like Alexa will be right back in the sort of boat when she returns to WWE. 
Do they keep her normal, or will she turn out to be the individual to keep the Bray Wyatt universe going in a new way with a new spin to her previous supernatural personas? A lot to get in there with Alexa's upcoming return, but at least we got confirmation from her that the return is in fact happening after all. The Judgment Day story with Andrade continued to develop this week in an interesting fashion. Dominic Mysterio wasn't physically on Raw this week because of his honeymoon, but his ongoing storyline was still advanced with a backstage segment. Andrade came to the Judgment Day's locker room looking for Dominic, but reinformed him that Dom wasn't there. But she did note to him that Dominic has been saying plenty of good things about Andrade in recent weeks. So, because of Dominic's good word on Andrade, Rhea and Judgment Day are willing to work with Andrade and do business with him. What's the nature of this Judgment Day business with Andrade? It's hard to tell at this given moment in time, but the answer should become clear in the coming weeks. Judgment Day very rarely brings in new full-time members into the group, but what we do know is that the group loves to make alliances and have backup plans, including other superstars outside of their group. The group has collaborated with the Bloodline and Drew McIntyre in times past without fully bringing any of them into the group. So based off that history, we know that some sort of collaboration with Andrade seems extremely possible. As far as the direction with this story, the popular fan belief right now is that Andrade will get some more harm than good to the overall unity of the Judgment Day. A lot of fans think that Andrade could convince Dominic to break away from the group and how the both of them could do something on their own. WWE has heavily hinted at this concept several times over the last few weeks, so the fans aren't really reaching that much. That idea seems to be extremely possible. And it's not only Andrade by himself, but there's just so many other little things surrounding Judgment Day that could all play a role in the group's demise. You have Rhea Ripley trying to focus on Becky Lynch. You have the R-Truth situation still being there. You have the threat to the group losing the tag team titles at WrestleMania, and then Andrade potentially pulling Dominic away from the group. And you also got the long ongoing power struggle still going on between Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest continuing too. So the Judgment Day could end up looking a bit different post WrestleMania if all these things end up going wrong for the group. So expect a lot of coverage and breakdowns of the Judgment Day related matters in the coming weeks. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.